Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to do another slightly more advanced and detailed flower study with the hellebore, a flower that blooms when very little else is blooming when January turns to February. So grab your paints and let's get started. Hi there, so let's get on with our hellebore. So I'm going to begin by drawing in the beginnings of a curved stem but my flower I'm going to put two flowers on this stem and the flower down here is going to be an open flower so I'm just going to draw in a circle which is going to be the place at which I anchor the petals of my flower and then I'm not going to sort of draw the stem up I'm going to imagine it carrying on up to about there and then I'm going to put in a another flower sort of from the side there and I'm just going to put in a curve that crosses at the stem which helps me know where the base of that flower is going to be when it sort of petals out that way and that little bit of extra stem extended helps me see which way the filaments and anthers are going to be. So that's all we need with our pencil. I've just been mixing up in my palette a purpley colour using Alizar and Crimson and French Ultramarine Blue and I've been adding plenty of water to it because I want to try and get a nice dilute mix. I'm also going to need some nice dilute green um, because the petals of a hellebore are the most incredible sort of mix of colours and what we're going to do is we're going to use our loose watercolour technique to achieve this blend and it seems quite a scary thing to try and blend these two colours in one but trust me it'll be fine. Um, so we've got the green gold and sap green mixed in there and the Alizar and crimson and French ultramarine mixed in there. Now let's get going with our flower then. So I'm going to begin by taking my size 6 brush and a pretty dilute bit of the alizarin and I'm going to paint in five petals on this but I'm going to begin by just painting three. So I've done a petal in this fairly dilute colour and then I'm going to get my green fluff on the brush and just dab it in there. It's very very important that you don't try and over mix those colours, you just need to let them do their thing. Okay now I'm going to put in another one down here. You almost imagine you're painting a helicopter propeller, not a helicopter, maybe a, a plane propeller that you've got three separate shapes and then, although it's very dilute, it's important to stress that you're not using a huge amount of water, it's just that the mix in your palette is dilute to start off with. And when you actually put the paint onto the paper, right, third petal, let's concentrate on this one. So the important thing is, is that these petals are not touching each other but because we're doing five petals there are going to be two that come pretty darn close to it so there we go and that's great we've got the blend coming from the other one happy days so I'm going to be popping in one more there and one more there when we come to doing that when those have dried now the only other thing I am going to do is get down to this part of the colour, the stronger colour, and just drop in just around the top a little bit more of an intense dark colour. We're going to leave that to one side for now and then we're going to focus on our petal over here. Now this one I'm going to do a slightly different technique. I'm going to begin with a petal in the foreground, okay, which is going to be a little bit sort of squashed in comparison to its other petals in the flower. So this looks a bit strange at the moment, so you just have to bear with me and 
see what I mean. So clean off the brush, little bit of green, not too much though. And then a little bit of that dark purple, just in at the top. And if you're using a wet and dilute colour, there will be enough water there on the page to get these nice little blends uh, that don't sort of go crazy and all over the place. Um, so yes, so for now, these need to dry, um, but in the meantime, we can have a little look at the stem. We can mix a colour for the stem. Now, um, hellebores are one of those flowers, uh, many flowers that have this, um, that the colour from the petals usually runs down into the stem itself. So I'm mixing a brown green stem. So there's a bit of burnt sienna there and a bit of sap green. But I'm also going to be allowing a little bit of dye from the uh, from the petals to go down in to the flower. Now I'm going to get a size two brush. Here we are, size two. And I'm going to begin by drawing in and just, just leaving it so it doesn't quite touch down the stem. And the great thing is at the top here is we can paint in that one because our petals aren't going to be disturbing it. Below we still have the case that we're going to have another paint, petal being painted in that's going to overlap this stem so we're not going to do too much there. And what I'm going to do is just drop in just a tiny bit of that purple and it doesn't really look like purple at this point because it's mixed in with the brown green mixture. Now we can have a look at some leaves so I've got a nice fresh sap green, which we're just going to use on its own here. And I've got a size four brush, and I'm going to pop in a few lovely curly leaves. And a hellebore leaf is a serrated edged leaf. So once I've done that, get the colour off that brush. Gosh, still got all that dark colour on it. I can just use that little brush to create a serrated edge just by pushing the colour out. And I can also just tidy up that side there. I'm going to pop in another leaf here. And again. And I'm um, also going to just get a little bit of darkness to just drop in the base. To just help create a little bit more intensity. So I always like dropping in just a little bit of blue to help just create like a shadowy sense of those leaves. Right, these petals are looking nice and dry. We can do finger test over the top and that's looking pretty good so I can start to pop in the next petals uh, so clean the brush and we're going to place in a petal that's going to overlap there we go and it doesn't matter too much that we're going to get a little bit of a blend because that green, it's wonderful, is just creeping in. To all the petals. So it's a little bit like the 
anemone project that I have in my book where we use the translucent layers to create wonderful crisp edged petals but there's going to be an awful lot going on in the middle of this so I'm not so concerned about leaving those petals till they're 100% bone dry. You can leave them until they're sort of touch dry and that means they will at least keep their shape. So that's looking absolutely lovely and we can have a look at this one up here which we take a slightly different approach with. Constantly having to clean my brushes off you see it's very important when you've got these two colours at play you don't want them to go sludgy and brown we've just about managed to avoid it there which I'm very pleased about. Okay so I am going to place in we've got four more petals we need so I'm gonna imagining the flowers growing that way I'm gonna have two sort of at the side and two further round the back so I'm gonna first place in one on the side there and I'm going to just paint around that central petal and then this one I don't want things to be completely symmetrical it's almost like we've given it two ears <laughs> looks a bit strange at this stage we can pop in the tiniest bit of the green we probably almost won't see it on that one a little bit of that stronger color at the top and whilst we wait for those to dry we can continue down with our stem because we now have <coughs> excuse me we now have a bit more uh, of an idea where our leaves and stems are going to sit so I'm just going to carry on the stem not quite touching that petal because it's still a little bit damp let's get a slightly more purpley color in there that's it lovely I'm going to pop in a leaf or two down at the bottom here in sap green need a bit more and then use my little brush to create a serrated edge and a little bit of that blue just to run up there okay now we are going to let this all dry 100% and then we can come back and finish it off we've got a completely dry piece and now the last little petals of the flower at the top can go in so we're going to place in one like that and then we let that one dry and we'll place in one more in a moment um, but we have to jump all over the place really when it comes to things that take their time with drying we can get back in here now you notice we've got leaves that just poke out and grow just behind the flower well that is the case for this one as well so I think we want to have some leaves that look like they're just growing out from behind and what's quite nice here is we've got just the tiniest more gap between these two petals so I've just sort of taken off any excess paint from my brush 
and just draw that down in and then whoops I can do that and this is a really like nice little trick for if you're painting your petals and they just look really uneven in terms of the spacing you can always pop in a few leaves because we're going to put in a few more lovely and then the other thing is to think about how this grows off from that and I think we would just see the faintest little bit of a branch so I've got my green gold here to start off with I can use that to just extend up that stem and get the two really joined up there and then a little bit of that darker colour to just blend down lovely and that just helps us connect up from there to there and talking of connecting up there's this tiny little gap between the base of this flower and we can just join that like that. Now we just need to see if this petal is dry, not quite. So the finger test is good because you can just about touch it and see. So we just need to give that one a few more minutes and then we can get on with the rest of our flowers. Last petal, oh, finally. So again, imagining it's coming out from there, anchoring. And there we have our last little petal. A little bit of stronger color in the top. And don't worry that we're not really seeing any of the green on this one because when we start to add in the details in the center of the flower that will all become clear so what I can do whilst we're waiting for that petal to dry is our leaves have now dried rather nicely and we can add in a little bit of leaf detail a few leaf lines so what I've got is my sort of rather um, sludgy stem mix which I've just added a bit more blue and a bit more brown to getting myself a sort of botanical shadowy mix and I'm just going to add in a few very delicate leaf lines I don't really like putting in too much because I think this can be the point at which you can really um, suddenly make a piece feel like you're trying too hard to put everything in when it's just not necessary. So I like to just pop in a few leaf lines. great so let's have a look at this one down here the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a bit of fairly concentrated green gold and I'm also gonna pick up some lemon yellow that's just poking out here I'm gonna wake that up 
and just mix that in to my green gold. What I'm looking for is a colour to start off the little filaments and anthers that are going to be sticking out of the centre of this flower. And we need a colour that is uh, fairly opaque, so I'm using quite a lot of pigment, mixing it in. And it's going to be at the sort of lightest, brightest version because we're then going to go back in with a bit of green and a bit of shadow around the edges of this. But what I'm going to do is I am going to paint in little sort of starburst dots coming from the centre. And they are going to be blending out and they are a little bit difficult to see but that's absolutely fine because we're going to be adding crisp edges and detail to them but they're more clustered in the middle I don't want them touching each other too much There's really quite a lot of paint on my brush here and I'm just going to allow these now to dry. And we will leave it like that and then we can come back and do detail on that and detail on this. Now we take this same colour and we use it first in a quite a delicate manner to just add a few little lines of the petal colour in a kind of dilute manner and the same thing is sort of being achieved in the open flower by having those filaments there and also by having the blend of colour come out from the centre there. Okay, so we let that dry and we go back here. So I need a really tiny brush, so I'm going to get my five tenths, another of these new brushes I've got. Um, link is in the episode notes if you are interested in getting your hands on some of these brushes. I'm based in the UK, so um, I get my brushes from a UK source, but in the wonderful world we live in these days that you can get things globally quite easily. So I hope that you don't have too much trouble there. Okay, so I've got myself some sap green here. And what I'm going to do is go around the majority, oh, fluff on my brush, of course. Go around the majority of these little dots and just give them the tiniest bit of green detail, a little edge. Just really helps them stand up off the page just a little bit more. And then I'm going to very carefully, with a little bit of the green in there, because I still want this colour to be quite light, I'm going to draw fine lines from the centre that connect my little dots, which are called anthers, to filaments, which are these little lines. So if you start with the, the most outer dots, it's probably a good idea because those are the ones 
that it, the lines are going to sort of stop when they meet a dot on the way into the center because of course those are the sort of most far out and sort of underneath the ones towards the middle. And the good thing is at this point is you can then go, right, I'm gonna add in a few more. Just helps you sort of see. And what I like to do is contrast it now by doing a few little ones that are sort of hollow, hollow color. So I'm just doing a little outline of a circle here, there and everywhere. So you get to have a bit of fun really. And then one last thing I do like to do with these central ones is with a very clean, wet, not clean wet brush, with a very wet and dilute brush. With a little bit of that colour on, I just want to do a few extra streaks that are coming up off the petals. I think I'll use that slightly larger brush. Just do this at the last point because sometimes you don't even need it, but it's kind of nice. Hellebore flowers come in a number of um, colours and tones and, and patterns. Some are very, very patterned, some aren't at all, but this feels like a really nice approach for a, a watercolour attempt at doing it successfully. Okay, so now let's have a look at how we're gonna do this same thing on the flower here. So our little dots are going to be protruding out from the center there. So we'll start with those first. that dry and then we'll join them up. So just like the first open flower, just define our anthers by giving them a little curl of sap green. And then I'm just going to turn it round so I can see what I'm doing and make sure that I am painting these lines into the centre. I think my brush is a little bit wet there. You need to make sure that your, your paint isn't too wet. lovely and then to finish off we're just going to do a little bit of shadow so I've got this nice botanical shadowy color up here 
and we're just going to find a few places where it looks like it would be a good idea to pop it in. So just sort of where the, the flower shields the stem, it's the bottom there. I'd like to put a bit sort of halfway up the leaf, the underside of the leaf. And then the tiniest bit. There. And then it's not that we need shadow on here, but what I like to do is just get a little bit of sort of rather concentrated shadow and just pop it on the bottom half of some of these lower down ones here, just so you get the sense of a slightly rounded feel. And you could just keep you could keep going, just sort of neatening up things here and there. Getting a few little extra lines. And that's the, the joy of, of painting in this style is you can just add layer after layer of detail. Or you can stop because it is sort of the beginnings. Of, it begins as a loose watercolour flower and becomes more and more detailed as you go. But for now, there you have my go at a hellebore. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for your support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button below and comment to let me know how you're getting on. And if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Okay, until next time, bye.